Howdy y'all. Have you ever looked back into the old world depictions of not only buildings and structures, but also people in their attire, and wondered exactly how everything came together so perfectly to create the world that we have today? Now the question becomes for me, as we discuss the advanced ancient civilizations, which seem to set the groundwork for nearly every major city around the world. What were the tools which inspired or aided this construction. That is where we come to a discussion of advanced ancient mechanisms, devices which we often call antiquitech, which can seemingly be interpreted in many different ways depending on who you ask and when. According to many modern history books, we are told that these devices were comprised mainly of simple tools and ornamental designs, and for the most part the major feats of the ancient world were achieved primarily by the use of manpower alone. It sure is easy to look past everything in our ancient world and take it for granted, and the history as understood. But as you know if you're here, we like to take a bit of a deeper dive on my channel. We will look into some aspects, and in this case devices, of our past, which could be called advanced for their time period. In this first video focused on Antiquitech, I'd like to look at the Dropa stones discovered in the mountain ranges along the border of Tibet and China. First, throughout time, we continually see depictions of gods, goddesses, warriors, champions, heroes, kings, queens, and all other deities alike sporting forms of antiquitech. At its base level, something I believe we often overlook is what exactly these depictions are representing. To understand that, for a 1000 year old statue to contain intricately designed jewelry, head attire, weaponry, and other advanced devices, the people of that time most often would have at least understood what these devices did or what they were meant to represent within this sculpture or artistic depiction. Take for example, a child drawing a superhero. You may see something in the child's picture of the hero that you might not understand, but when you ask the child who drew it, oh, what does that do? They will be quick to respond, oh, that's his freeze ray, or oh, that's her invisibility cloak. The artist always knows what they are depicting. I believe the same can be said about these advanced ancient artistic depictions. Those who made the depictions of these deities and these heroes knew exactly what these representations and the Antiquitech were supposed to do, for lack of a better term, and that is why they were included there. Meaning, the beauty of many of these old world sculptures aside, we can look at the imagery depicted the things in the hands and draped on the bodies of these sculptures and also within the ancient artworks and we can try to focus on these specific instruments to try to figure out what their exact purposes could have been. The same can be said of buildings with unique or seldom seen or imitated designs, but in today's video I want to talk about the Dropa stones, which are really unique discs said to date back over 12,000 years which I believe they really need to be discussed, even if that discussion comes with an asterisk. The Dropa stones today are gone. If they did exist at all, they were lost to time, purchased off by private collectors, or destroyed by the government of which they ended up in, China. Depending on what source you read, and according to the government and historical societies in China, these stones never existed at all and no current record of them can be found in any Chinese museums today. Modern scientists agree with that statement. However, we also have countless, and I mean countless, I'd say I was able to find at least 100 or more Google books alone of scientific journals from the year 1938 through the year 1980 that documented the Dropa Stones. These mystical devices had many unique properties to them as written in these early scientific accounts, before the stones were seemingly lost after the year 1974. According to early scientific records, published between the years 1938 and 1980, the Dropa stones, or the Dropa discs, were discovered in 1938 by a group of archaeologists led by Chai Pu Te who were exploring deep caves which ran and seemingly connected the border between Tibet and China. In these same records, of which there are numerous, it is stated that skeletal remains of over 100 humans, adults, 
but no more than four feet in height were found in these caves. Also amongst these dwellings were cave drawings, and most importantly it seems, were the 716 Dropa stone discs. Now, according to these narratives, the caves which appeared natural at the onset of the cave began to become more man-made in appearance as the explorers went deeper and deeper. At the point in the cave where the discs and the burial site was found, it is written that the walls were almost perfectly flat, as if cut, and the walls were glazed or finished. The discs themselves are said to be nearly perfect circular structures, almost all one foot in diameter, with each one containing a set of two intricately cut grooves, as well as hieroglyphic-like art. According to these earliest narratives, this finding was quickly silenced by the local government, the deepest part of the cave was then sealed off, and the contents of the cave, including the 716 Dropa discs, were sent to Beijing University, where they would remain relatively undisturbed and unknown for the next 20 years. At some point, within the grooves on the Dropa discs were found to be tiny, nearly microscopic hieroglyphs. Much like early records placed the needle in a groove to play back music, these hieroglyphs appeared to have some sort of advanced feature, as the hieroglyphs were nearly impossible to see with the naked eye. Beijing University apparently then brought in Dr. Sum Um Ne in the early 1960s to try to decipher all of these discs. After four years, Dr. Sum concludes he has deciphered the hieroglyphs and the ancient language written on the Dropa discs. In his findings, he wrote that the Dropa discs contained the history of man and how that history begins in ancient Asia when an aircraft, something like a spaceship of an advanced people crashed on earth in that region. Dr. Sum continues that these creatures were then hunted furiously by the ancient Dropa and Hun people before finally realizing that these creatures were peaceful and they intermingled with one another. This, according to Dr. Sum, led to the Dropa people advancing much faster than the rest of the world and also led to their size becoming so small or them all being listed as roughly four feet tall. Now, when Dr. Sum released these statements, he was shunned by most of the scientific community. Further research seems to indicate that his career essentially ended after he attempted to publish these findings. Whether that is due to the Chinese government blocking this publication, we may never know. However, Dr. Sum was able to have his finished work published, albeit he himself went into reclusion in Japan, and no record indicates what happened to him after this time. While Dr. Sum's findings seemingly ended his career and possibly his life. In this narrative, we are told his work caught the attention of Russian scientists who looked to conduct further experiments on the discs. We are told multiple Dropa discs are then sent to Russia. We have official reports in the Russian science magazine Sputnik declaring the head of research on the discs, Dr. Yakoslav Zatsev described an experiment where the discs were supposedly placed on a special turntable whereby they were shown to vibrate or hum in an unusual rhythm as though an electric charge was passing through them. It is said after these experiments, the discs were then destroyed only to find that they contained extremely high levels of rare materials. The last known sighting of any of the Dropa discs occurred in 1974 when Dr. Ernst Wagner visited the Bonpo Museum. Here, he requested two of the stones or discs and information about them. He was told he could not take the stones with him for further research and the museum knew nothing about the stones, but they did allow Ernst to view the stones while he was there. To his amazement, he found it difficult to photograph the stones at all, as without his flash, they appeared dull and lifeless. But when he applied a flash to these discs or just a tiny amount of bright light, the stones glowed almost too bright to be photographed. 
He also noted that while he could barely see the grooves or the hieroglyphs with his naked eye, he did admit that the grooves were indeed there. And when I looked into it, I could locate zero of these photographs that were taken by Dr. Ernst Wagner. From there, the Dropa stones go missing from all historical record books. If they did exist, they are now some of the rarest early Antiquatech one could ever get their hands on. Not only did these nearly perfect discs seem to tell the story of our ancient history in nearly microscopic hieroglyphs, but they also were created out of stone and minerals and a compound which seemed to, according to these early records, be conductive of electricity. Being 12,000 years old or more also makes this discovery, if substantiated, one of the most important discoveries in all of Asian history. And yet, this is where we reach the main issue. All records of these Dropa discs have seemingly been misplaced or destroyed. It's odd to me. On the official narrative page, we have all these references and resources given to the early reports about the Dropa discs, and I was able to myself locate at least 100 additional sources written in English making claims about these discs. And yet, in the modern day, 2022 official narrative page, we have three paragraphs that are given here at the end, basically claiming that the stones never existed, the Chinese government never destroyed them, and the whole thing was a claim that was made up by one man years after the discs were discovered. How can the discs and this whole story itself be a fabrication and made up by someone who essentially made up the story according to this claim after the discs and the cave had already been discovered, reported, and excavated? I have literal documents dated to 1938 the year the cave was founded. So for the mainstream current narrative to say that the whole story was a fabrication from many years later is absolutely obtuse to me. What I believe, in my opinion, that we have here is evidence being covered up and hidden. And through years of rewriting this narrative, we are told that essentially these discs never existed. However, at the same time, and the funniest part about all this in the mainstream, the current narrative, the three paragraphs in this mainstream narrative which claim that everything else written before it is essentially a lie or fabrication are the only three paragraphs in this whole narrative that don't have any citations. Meanwhile, while the Dropa discs have scientific reports published worldwide roughly 80 years ago and onward, right up until about 1980, seemingly proving their validity, we still have the mainstream article today and scientists from China today literally making unsubstantiated claims that this history is all a lie. So I want to end the video asking, what do you think about the Dropa Discs? Do you think the Dropa Discs really existed? Do you think that they still exist today? And do you think that the Dropa Discs had advanced Antiquatech properties? I'd love to hear your thoughts and your comments down below. And if you want to support me or reach out to me directly, you can do so on these links here. Thank you so much for being here, and I look forward to talking to you on the next video.